Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and I am the owner and maker of Flynn Sisters Boutique. And today I'm gonna to show you an old classic. We're gonna be making a full glitter pencil tumbler and we're gonna be using Peachy Olive Glitters pencil glitter bundle to create this. I'm gonna have that bundle listed and linked down below in the description box as well as a discount code for it. Uh, and I know this is definitely not a new design, but I just absolutely love it. And these glitter colors are the perfect colors for this project. I also want to give a big shout out to Miss Ashley Mears. She is the original creator of the pencil tumbler. I'm so inspired by her. I'm going to have her shop listed down below as well. Uh, and you're going to find all the links to our social media. You guys We're on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Please go find us on TikTok. We have so much fun over there. Uh, but that's definitely enough to chat for me. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, you guys, so as usual, we're going to start by sanding to prep our cup. I'm using an 80 grit sanding block, and I'm just going to lightly sand all around the cup just to scuff it up a little bit and give our paint and epoxy a nice surface to adhere to. Once I'm done sanding all over the surface of my cup, I'm just gonna spray it down with some rubbing alcohol and wipe it off with some paper towels. Now we're ready to get started. I want to start by measuring the bottom base of my tumbler where I'm going to end up having like the zigzag portion of my pencil, like the wood part of our pencil, okay? So I'm going to use a sewing ruler to measure the length around the very bottom of my cup, okay? We're going to be using this measurement to make our own template for the wood part of the pencil. I think this is the most challenging part. And um, they don't make templates for 30 ounce traditional cups. So I wanted to show you how I would make my own. The width around the bottom of my 30 ounce traditional tumbler from Craft Haven is nine and a half inches. So in Cricut Design Space, we're gonna click on shapes, then we're going to click on square, and we're going to unlock the proportions on that square by clicking on the little lock button. And then we're gonna resize this to 9.5 inches wide by a half inch tall. You can make this any kind of width you want. Just try to envision the space that you'll want the wood part of your cup to be. Then I made a triangle kind of approximately how I would want that zigzag shape to look. Above where I'm working, you can see an example of what the finished product will look like. So I just kind of like guesstimated the size and shape that I'd want my triangle to be. And then I just duplicated it enough to span the width of that rectangle that we created. Once I have enough triangles to span the width of that rectangle, we're going to select all of them and we're going to make sure they're all aligned. So very carefully, just select all of your triangles, then go up to a line, and then you're going to select distribute horizontally. That's going to evenly distribute them in a row. And then we kind of want to resize them to where they're going to kind of like match the same size as our rectangle. All right, you might need to play with this a little bit. Um, but I just made sure that they were all selected again and then um, group them all together. All right. And then you'll resize them to 9.5 inches wide. So they, again, match the same width of that rectangle that we created. So once we have those triangles all lined up and made to be the same size as our rectangle here, we're just going to position them right over our rectangle. Then we'll select both our triangles and the rectangle and we want to weld these all together so that they will all be one piece. Make sure you, before you weld these that you have your square to the width that you want. Like after I got the triangles on top there, I realized that I wanted that rectangle to be a little smaller. So I just made it a little thinner. I think my rectangle ended up being just under a half an inch wide. 
So once we have this all put together, we're just going to cut this out of some regular vinyl and get it weeded. And now I'll show you how I lay this template on the cup. I like using the vinyl like this because it's nice and flexible. So I don't have to make sure that it is, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't have to make sure that it's like uh, warped so that it can go around a curve. It's going to curve naturally when we line it up on the cup. My 30 ounce traditional cup already has a natural line at the bottom here for that bottom rim. So I'm just going to line the flat edge of our template here right against that, taking my time to smooth everything out as I go. Remember that this doesn't have to be perfect. We're just using this as like a template. Okay, so if you have some wrinkles or things, don't worry about that. We just need it to mask off this section while we glitter our other sections of the pencil. Next, we're gonna take one inch blue painter's tape and put it around the top rim of our cup, which will be the eraser part of our pencil. And then once I have that laid down, I'm going to use half inch double stick tape for what will be like this silver part of our eraser, like that metal part that holds the eraser on. So just line that right up against our blue masking tape. Next, I'm going to use Saran Wrap to mask off the remainder of my cup while I spray paint the bottom black for the lead part of our pencil. I know that I'm probably going to be accused of doing things the hard way on this, but I am really insistent upon spray paint for my base colors and epoxy method to apply glitter. That is why I'm taking this extra time to mask off my sections and use spray paint because I find that I just get the best coverage this way. All right, so next, after I spray paint that lead section and it dries, I'm going to mask it off with some saran wrap and we'll move on to base coat the yellow part of our pencil. First with white primer, then with yellow. Once that dries, the reason you wanna use a white primer with yellow spray paint is because it tends to be translucent. So I just get better results that way. As soon as the yellow section is dry, I'm going to remove the masking on the eraser part and spray paint it uh, this pink color. In hindsight, I would use neon uh, pink or <laughs> brighter pink because I am using a bright pink glitter and I didn't get very good results. So I ended up having to color that in with a neon paint marker. This is just an acrylic paint marker. Uh, because I did not want to have to mask off and paint that section again. Um, so this was just a quick way to get some nice color on there and not have to wait for everything to dry. All right, and then once we've got all our base colors painted and dry, we're ready to start our glitter. I am using a fast setting epoxy from Illumilite. This is their amazing quick coat. I absolutely love it. And I've got about 10 milliliters of it mixed here. I'm not gonna use all of it. I'm just gonna use a tiny amount. Uh, and we're going to spread it on with a gloved hand. You wanna make sure that your cup is slightly warm to the touch to help you spread everything on. And I'm just going to spread epoxy on the yellow section of our pencil, being very careful to avoid the pink and black section, okay? Because we're just going to glitter one section at a time using the epoxy as our adhesive. If you feel more comfortable with Mod Podge, you absolutely can do that. I just really love the results uh, I get with epoxy method glitter. So I'm gonna be stubborn and do it this way. <laughs> it might take longer. Um, it might be a little more difficult, but I just, I love the results. All right, so anyway, once we've got this all smoothed on and there's no lines in our epoxy, we're gonna let it rip with this beautiful yellow glitter from Peachy Olive Glitters. This is St. Jude. It's definitely one of my favorite yellows. And we're going to just carefully sprinkle this on, again, avoiding the pink and black sections. We don't have epoxy on the pink and black sections yet, so it's okay, um, but we still wanna keep everything nice and neat. So after we glitter that, we're going to aggressively tap off the excess, and then with that same pot of fast setting epoxy, we are going to quickly move on to the black, or excuse me, the pink section.
The reason I'm doing the lighter sections first is I just felt like it would be easier to keep that black out of the yellow and pink sections if I got them glittered first. So that's the order that we're gonna be doing it. And then once we get that epoxy applied there, I'm going to be using Wednesdays for my pink. This is a beautiful pink glitter, probably one of my favorite hot pinks. And we're just going to very carefully sprinkle it onto that pink section, being very careful to not get it into our yellow section. All right, and then lastly, we will move on to our black section. Still the same pot of epoxy, same pair of gloves, very carefully applying our epoxy to this bottom lead portion of our pencil. And then we're gonna use Batman for our glitter. Um, this is a beautiful black glitter. This is part of that pencil bundle, <laughs> pencil glitter bundle. I don't know why I have such a hard time saying that. Okay. And then uh, after we apply the black glitter, we are going to tap everything off very aggressively into the garbage because we don't want all that mixed up glitter. Okay. Set this upside down on my rack to dry. We don't need to put it on our turner. Okay. And then after about 20 or 30 minutes, I'm gonna come back again, aggressively tapping off any excess glitter, and we will very carefully remove that template that we laid down for the wood part of our pencil. Now, our epoxy is still kind of wet, so we wanna be careful when we're removing this so we don't disturb anything. You don't wanna wait until your epoxy dries to remove this part, because you can risk pulling up some of your colors and kind of messing up what we got going on here. After we get that part removed, I'm gonna let this dry for at least an hour before we move on to our next step. All right, so now that all those other sections are pretty much dry, I'm going to do the silver section by removing that protective paper on our double stick tape that we laid down earlier. If you have some stubborn pieces on that uh, double stick tape, just use your X-Acto knife to kind of score them off and remove them. And we're gonna use that double stick tape as adhesive for the silver glitter. As soon as I get this covered, I'm gonna go right over it with a second coat because I almost never get good coverage with just double stick tape alone. So using Mod Podge and just a regular old paintbrush, we're going to paint in our second coat of glitter to get fantastic coverage. All right, so once we were done with that, I just tapped off the excess silver glitter and then we're going to move on to what would be like the wood part of our pencil. We're gonna use Gold Member from PG Olive Glitters for this section. And I'm using just a cheap old like Crayola Crayola paintbrush for this, and I'm using Alumalite's Amazing Sealer as my adhesive. You could use Mod Podge also. I just like this stuff because there's less odor than regular Mod Podge. I'm gonna work section by section all the way around the cup. And then once I'm done, I'm gonna let it dry for about 20 to 30 minutes, and then I'll go back over it with a second coat in the same way that I applied this coat. I'm gonna let all of that dry for a while, probably at least a good two hours or so until all my glitter feels dry and crunchy. And then I'll go over it with a big brush to brush out any pieces that might be out of place, um, brush off any kind of excess glitter. And of course, a nice, good, aggressive tap off in the trash can as well. And then I'm going to seal this with Rust-Oleum two times gloss clear spray paint. A good two coats of this is enough. And then we're ready for our first coat of epoxy. For this first coat of epoxy, I wanna just start in the lightest section first and then move on from there so that I end with sp spreading epoxy over the darkest section. That way I'm not moving colors all around. This was sealed really well and we got really good adhesion with our application process. So nothing should really be moving around, but just in case, I would rather be safe than sorry. I think I've got like 30 milliliters of epoxy mixed here for this. Uh, and then uh, once I have this all coated, I'm gonna hit it with my torch really quick to blast any bubbles. And then I'm gonna let it dry for about four to six hours. 
After that, I did apply a second coat right over the top of this, and I let my second coat of epoxy dry for about 8 to 12 hours before moving on to the next step. Uh, that second coat was only about 20 milliliters of epoxy. All right, and then we were smooth enough to start with sanding and decals. I'm gonna do my normal sanding routine, which I'm not gonna talk a whole lot about because we do cover this in almost every tutorial. Mainly we want to sand around the top rim, exposing a fine line of stainless steel. And that's where our final coats of epoxy will adhere to to create the seal so that we're sealing on the outer rim rather than the upper rim where it's more vulnerable. I'm also going to take some sandpaper and just kind of go around the cup to knock down any super pokey bits. After I'm done sanding, I'm going to rinse this off with some dish soap and water. Now we're ready for our decal work. I do want to take some vinyl lines along all of these edges here just to clean them up and to create a more crisp look. So I've already cut my vinyl with my Cricut. Uh, using the shapes feature in Cricut Design Space, I cut these rectangles at 11.5 inches wide by 0 0.10 inches tall. And that's how we created these strips. I duplicated it several times. You're gonna need about four, no more than that, to go around all these little zigzags. And then uh, I also did a black one for the black section. I did pink and silver for the top eraser, but I ended up not using it because I didn't have a long enough piece of vinyl to go all the way around and it just looked kind of chintzy. I ended up using washi tape for that part. <laughs> Okay, and this is just a cute like frosted silver washi tape that I found at Hobby Lobby. You can find this super thin washi tape there in all different kinds of colors. So we just laid that by hand going along that natural line there of our design and then trimming the excess in the back there with our craft knife. Okay, and then once I was done with all that vinyl work and I got my decal on there, I was ready for my final coats of epoxy. Uh, this cup took two final coats before it was totally smooth. So this one is, I think about 20 milliliters of epoxy I'm putting on here. And then I let that dry for about four to six hours. And then I went directly in with another coat right after that. I let that second coat roll for about six hours. I turned off my turner and then we don't wanna mess with it for a full 12 hours before we start to clean it up and everything like that. And so our second coat has been drying overnight and we're ready to clean it up. So I'm just going to first start by removing my cup arm and taking the tape out. Normally I don't have masking tape in there, but because my cup arm goes in a little further on these ones, I do try to tape off the inside so I didn't get, I didn't get too much like paint or extra epoxy in there. And we're gonna run our craft knife along that top rim to remove any excess epoxy. If you got any epoxy on the inside of your cup, you can pop that off with the tip of your craft knife as well. It comes off pretty easy. You just gotta kind of scratch at it. Just make sure you don't scratch the inside of your cup, okay? The goal is for the inside of the cup to look exactly as it did when you took it out of the box, all right? I'm gonna take some acetone and clean up any excess paint that might have made its way in here. Then a quick spray down of some rubbing alcohol on the inside and wipe that down as well. And then once we've got all that cleaned out, we're gonna take this over to the sink to wash it up. I usually do just a quick squirt of like some Dawn Power Wash and then I use my Scrub Daddy sponge to clean it out. I do like to keep a dedicated sponge just for my tumblers that's separate from the one that I use for my dishes. Once we get this all cleaned up, I'm gonna let it sit for a 72 hour period before I would package it up and send it out to somebody. So that is it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you guys have any helpful like tips and tricks on making these pencil cups, let us know in the comments. Uh, but that's it. I really appreciate you watching my video. Please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We upload videos every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.
And a big thank you to all of our Flynn Sisters exclusive members. Thank you for your pledge. Your support means the world to our channel. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.